Young Show. Hello. I don't suppose there's anybody in the whole wide world who doesn't want to be successful. In one way or another, that is. But uh, what is success? Uh, what does the word success mean to you, for instance? Money? Important position? Marriage? Health? Well, we asked our writer that same question, and the answer she came up with became our story tonight. Our story tonight begins in New York City. And that's all I'm going to tell you about it. New York theater openings are usually off limits for me because I'm a Hollywood press agent. The night, however, was a family affair. You see, my sister's husband directed the play. Then my sister and her husband are my favorite married people. Here you are, Tommy. Thank you. My love, a toast <clears throat> to a great new director. Logan Kanan Kazan, look to your laurel. <laughs> here, here, Tommy. <laughs> Thank you. Oh. But you know, I've got one thing that they haven't got. Now, it may sound corny, but it's true. <clears throat> I could have never done it without Madeline. Oh, you could, you could. <laughs> Believe me, it is true. She's given me some of my best ideas. Sister of yours is quite a gal. Oh, wait a minute. I've got news for you. I know it. Hey, fellas, take it easy. We got to all And up. I've got more news for you. You're being tapped for Hollywood, Mike. Hollywood? Yep. I talked to Lou Zimmer long distance on the way over. I read him your notices, and he wants you. He told me to offer you a year straight with options. He'll talk salary later, but it'll be good. And he's got some fine properties, too. Hollywood. Speechless. Well, you don't have to decide now. Think about it. Talk it over with your alter ego here. It's a good life, Mike. And don't underestimate the work, either. Oh, we don't mind work. Work's our middle name. Right. Good night, sis. Uh, good night, Tommy. Oh, you bearer of good news, you. <laughs> I don't want to influence you much. But it would be nice, all of us together again. Yeah, sure would, wouldn't it? We'll think about it. No hurry. Just let me know in the morning, huh? Yeah. Good night, kids. Good night, Tommy. Well, thanks, Tom. Oh, gee, I've heard this happening to people, but I, I never thought it would happen to us. Would you like to go? I, I think so. Yes, I think so, because we'd have a chance then for a, the real home we've always talked about. Not just two rooms and a kitchenette like this, but a, a real house with a, a real kitchen and a real backyard and flowers and trees and, and everything. And Yeah. Yeah, I'd like to go. That well, is if you would. Madeline, we've had three perfect years here. I know. But there is more to living than just this. I've got some ideas for pictures. I bet you have, Mike. I bet you've got some wonderful ideas. Yes, Mike's hard-won success was Maddie's, too. And no team ever exchanged Broadway New York for Vine Street Hollywood with more enthusiasm than they did. Mike, look! Look up our own tree, and it has blossoms on it. Smell. <laughs> nice. Wonderful. And, Tommy? Yeah, if you like orange blossoms. Oh, you. Look, you can see the ocean from here. And on a clear day, you can see Honolulu. Or is it Catalina? The Catalina. Yeah, that's what she said. And at night, with all the city at your feet, it's like... I know, a, a shimmering carpet of oriental splendor. Huh? My dear sister, for two weeks before you got here, I spent all my waking hours with real estate agents, remember? <laughs> yeah, I sure hope the rest of my books get here soon. Oh, never mind, sweetie. I've got something that'll fill up those nice big holes for you. Look at that, hmm? Cooking for two. That's right. Madeline, you're not. Yes, I am. Have you seen that beautiful electric range out in our beautiful kitchen? Mm. Mike, I just love this place. It's our first real home. My little housewife. <laughs> I uh, hate to break up this touching huh? scene, but I think we better start for the studio, Mike. But you're not supposed to go to work till next week. I know, darling, but I should check in. Oh. Uh, yeah, listen. Uh, when will you be home? You should be home about noon, and we'll get in the car and see if that Pacific is really as blue as they say. Oh, I love it. Goodbye, sweetie. Bye. Bye, Tom. Bye, honey. Take care of him now. Yeah.
Hello? Hello, darling. Throw some things into a bag, will you? We're leaving for the Grand Canyon at 3 o'clock. The Grand Canyon? I'll be home in a few minutes. I'll tell you about it then. Oh, okay. Bye. Grand Canyon. Hi, honey. Oh, hi. Now, what do you think of this? I wasn't in the studio a half hour before I got an assignment. How wonderful, Mike. And listen, what is all this about the Grand Canyon? Well, Zimmer had a fight with the director on a uh -huh. big biblical epic with a capital E. And I was there, so he gave it to me. A biblical epic? Oh, sweetie, don't they know that your specialty is comedy? No, this is not the reason why. Yeah, I guess not. I got a taxi waiting. Is the bag ready? Yeah, almost. I'll be right with you. I I've always been just dying to see the Grand Canyon. Well, Madeline, it's going to be real rough where we're going, sweetheart. You know, no running water, no heat, sleeping in a tent, and all that sort of thing. Oh, I'm just going to love sleeping in a tent. Sweetheart. Yeah. Wives are included out. Oh? Oh, well, I'm, so, I'm sorry. I must have misunderstood you. I, I thought you said we were going to the Grand I did, honey, but I meant the company. Oh. oh well, I'm sorry. You're going to find a lot of my things packed in that bag, I'm afraid. I'll love it. Oh. Goodbye. Yeah. Well, Tommy will take good care of you. Yeah. Gee, I hate running out on your life. Yeah, it's all right. Uh, don't worry. I'll, uh, I'll work on my souffles while you're gone, okay? I won't be gone, though. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Mike's location, John, took longer than expected. A full month longer. But I showed Maddie the Hollywood high spots, including the Beverly Derby and Polly Hammond, Dowager Duchess of Bel Air. Madeline! Darling! Oh, hi, Tommy. Oh. Don't get up. Oh, darling. Oh, I heard you were coming out, but I had no idea you were already here. Oh, yes. I'm just getting settled. Mm -hmm. How's Paul? Busy as usual. Oh. Last week he finished writing King Lear. This week he's rewriting it. <laughs> oh, where does Shakespeare come in? Oh, he'll get a screen credit. Oh, I see. Well, you must come to dinner, dear. Paul is crazy to see Mike and hear all about New York. How about tonight? Oh, we can't. No, Mike's away on location. A picture widow already? Hmm? What's a picture widow? It's like a golf widow, only more so. Right, Tommy? No, I'm just a bachelor, so I wouldn't know about widows of any kind. <laughs> that uh, wouldn't necessarily follow. <laughs> <laughs> Darling, Friday night she was coming with me to Rita Newman's house. She's having the girls to dinner. The girls? Mm-hmm. What about the boys? Friday night? Uh -huh. The boys? Friday's fight night, sis. The boys always eat near the stadium on Friday night. <laughs> oh. You plan to come with me, dear? Well, uh, no, I can't, Polly, because uh, Mike's getting home Friday morning, and uh, we're going to have a weekend at home alone. Uh-huh, that's nice work, if you can get it. <laughs> Bye, darling. Uh, I, I can't keep the girls waiting. <laughs> no. Let's see you soon. One of the most beautiful and costly views in the world is had from the topmost hills of Bel Air. Maddie had it. She could afford it, too, because Mike was such a big success with his first location picture, Zimmer assigned him another right away. Tommy, you should have warned me. Sorry, sis. I guess I just didn't realize it. No. I feel so lost. In New York, Mike and I were always together. Working together, playing together, everything. I was part of his life then. When I'd drop into the theater, I was welcome. They'd even ask my opinion on things, but here... Now, wait a minute, sis. Don't go overboard. Everyone at the studio likes you very much. Oh, sure, sure. They like me. But they like me in my place. I've got news for you. Around a studio, a wife is about as popular as a chorus girl's mother backstage. But Mike doesn't work all the time. No, no, he doesn't work all the time. When he isn't working, he's playing tennis with Mr. Zimmer. Or playing cards with Mr. Zimmer. Or looking at film with Mr. Zimmer. Say we do go to somebody's house, you know what happens? No, what happens? Well, the boys go in one room, play cards, talk about films. The girls go in another room, play cards, talk about clothes. Yeah. Could it be? It is! Tommy, he's home! Darling! You're home for dinner! Oh, it's the cook's night out. Hi, Tom. Oh, well, I came for the cook. What do you mean, the cook's night out? Didn't you tell her about the snake preview? Didn't get around to it. Oh, what do you mean? What snake preview? What? Where? Tonight, Riverside. Oh? We leave now. We have to stop and wait for dinner. Oh, that sounds wonderful. I'll get it. Yeah. Thanks, Tom. 
Uh, uh, Tommy, it's kind of like a, uh, an opening night, huh? Uh, not quite. The lady yeah. Oh, sure. Of Honey, what in Rome do as the Romans do? Now go on, get your coat. Oh, yeah. All right, it won't be a minute. Madeline. Yeah. Honey, I'm in a jam. That was Zimmer. Seems he wants me and the riders to go to Riverside in his car. Of course, I could try to get out of it. Oh, no, no. That's all right. It's business, of course. You, you go along with him. That'll be all right. You come along with me, Maddie. Uh, no, no, thanks, Tommy. Uh, but uh, thanks anyway. What are you going to do? Well, there's some just darling little recipes I can work on. Better get some cigarettes. By now, Maddie was an acknowledged hostess, a sought-after guest. She had a beautiful home, a very successful husband. But success out here, like almost everywhere else, devours people. And she had nights when she knew it. Those were the nights without invitations or guests. Hi, Maddie. Hi, darling. You're home. Oh, sorry I'm late. Oh, that's all right. Come on, dinner's already. Oh, uh, later. Hmm? Oh, all right. One drink first? Yeah, please. Oh. What a script. We sent it to Mimeograph. Zimmer's going to read it over the weekend. Oh, good. There you are. Mm. Thanks, honey. Well, I'll get one for you, too. Oh. I'll take you for the weekend. Zimmer can have the script. Oh, now, just a minute. If I do say so myself, it is worth reading. Well, I'm sure... It's an excellent script. It's the best job I've ever done. I'm sure it is. But why don't we just forget the script for a little while? Forget it? How can I forget it? It's my job. All right. Mike, you're beginning to sound like a job. And you're not. You're you. You're yourself. Oh, dear. Don't get so completely involved in the thing that you can't think of anything else besides... All right, all right, all right. All right. Madeline. How'd you like to go to San Francisco for breakfast? Really? Why not? Oh, I'd love it. <laughs> what are we waiting for? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> well, throw something into a bag and catch the first plane, okay? Come on, come on. With you. Oh, what the wonder. Oh, I knew it. Knew what? That zimmer. Oh. What are you going to do, Mike? It's elemental, though, my dear Watson. I can't answer the phone if I'm not here. And we've left already. Come on. So we turned right around, took the very next plane back. Look, darling. Paul and I have been trying to get to San Francisco for two years. At least you did get as far as the lobby of the Mark. Oh, yeah. <laughs> How did Zimmer know you were there? Well, it seems that Mike very casually mentioned once that he'd like to take me to San Francisco some weekend. The big man's an elephant in more ways than one. <laughs> you know that he called every hotel in San Francisco until he reached Mike? I know. I've been through that bit. Oh? He was very nice about it at first. Said he wanted Mike to come back because they were putting on a new finish and it was Mike's original idea. Uh-huh. But then when Mike became firm about not returning until Tuesday, Mr. Zimmer said that he had to come back, otherwise it would be a... A breach of contract. Oh, you've been through that, too. You know, Polly, last night was the first night since we've been married that we went to sleep without saying goodnight to each other. When I woke up this morning, he was gone. Look, dear, there are compensations. This is for the weekend we didn't go to San Francisco. That's for the weekend we didn't go skiing. I had to wait two hours at Romanoff's and finally have dinner alone for this one. This, this is for being a good girl and not crying my eyes out all the nights he was tied up at the studio. Oh. Relax, dear, and take your place among the picture widows. I can't. You know the old saying, if you can't lick them, join them. I just can't, Polly, I'm sorry. Well, dear, I can't keep the girls waiting. No, sorry. Sure you won't change your mind and join us for lunch. I'm sure. All right. Oh, excuse me, will mm -hmm. you? Yes? Mrs. Elliott? Yes. 
I have a package for you. Oh, thank you. You're welcome, ma'am. Mm-hmm. Special messenger. Ah, a secret admirer. I don't know. It's from Mike. He feels as badly about not saying goodnight as I do. Oh, man, look, isn't that beautiful? Yes, isn't it? Hmm? Well, bye, dear. Here he is. Hey, everybody, here he is, Polly. Oh, oh he's coming. Come on, come on, everybody. Everybody, come on. And the minute he comes in, happy anniversary. Good. Now. Happy, happy anniversary. anniversary. I'm sorry, it, it wasn't he. Oh. They look smart, huh? Well, they're beautiful. Where are they from? Uh, Mr. Zimmer. The great man. Uh, sorry to hold your boy up on this occasion. Happy anniversary. Better like next time, Lou Zimmer. <laughs> What a man. Always the right word. Yeah. Yeah, Let me take this for you, honey. Oh, thanks. Well, yeah. so, shall we finish our walk? Yeah. <laughs> well, couldn't you please ask him if I should hold dinner any longer? I'm sorry, Mrs. Elliott. The red light just went on. I have to hang up. Oh, wait a minute. Please ask him to call me just as soon as he can, will you? All right. I'll tell him. That's good, dear. But are you on your way home now? Right after we get the close-ups. Everybody's on fire, and I don't want to stop now. Mike, couldn't the assistant director do the close-ups? For some scary reason. Tonight's very important to me. No, Maddie, no, he can't. Please, Mike, please. Maddie, this is my job. Now, don't argue about it. Oh, all right. Come whenever you're ready. Tell him it was the one. Bye now, darling. Yeah. Goodbye. Goodbye, Paul. Hi. Hi. So you've met your wedding dress? Happy anniversary. Yesterday. I know you're hurt. I'm sorry, but I can't help you. I'm not hurt. I'm very angry. Look, I didn't stay away on purpose. Think I enjoyed myself? Yes, I do. Well, believe me, this has been a rough night for me. Has it night? Has it really? Then do you? I'd not like you to make an issue over a party. I'm not making an issue over the party. The party is just a climax of many, many little things. And it's a symbol of something I held very precious. Something I was fighting for and lost. Oh, Madeline, it's six o'clock in the morning and I'm beat. I know you are and I'm very sorry that you are, but I think this is very important to both of us, Mike. Well, must you go on with this? Yes, I must, but don't worry. It won't take very long. All right, all right. Go ahead. Oh, you needn't look so martyred. You won't have to put up with me much longer. What? what are you talking about? It's really very simple, Mike. I know when I'm licked. We got married because we needed each other. Because you and I, it was the most important thing in the world for us to be together. But it's not that way anymore. We're not together anymore, ever. I can't reach you, Mike. I've lost you to a job. Yeah, it's just not making sense. You know, it was your idea to come out. I know it was. I know it. And I know now how, how, how wrong I was. <laughs> you know, if it wasn't so sad, it'd be funny. I talked you into coming out here. 
because I thought we'd have a real home. The kind of home that you... Oh, you've talked to me so many times about, Mike. The kind of home you, you had as a child with a real yard, real trees. Good place to raise children. Children. Well, I, I, I know now the place is not important. Could be two rooms in a kitchenette or, or one room in a basement. Or any little spot where a husband and wife can really live together, really think together, and really be together. That's a home. Not this. You know, if it were a woman you were involved with, I, I, I could handle it. I'd know what to do. I'd fight. But I, I, I can't fight a whole industry. I can't fight a way of life. And I can't give in to it. Because if I do, I lose myself as well as you. So I'm going back to New York. I, I don't think you'll miss me. I don't think you'll even know I'm gone, but I, I wanted to... Information. Will you please give me the telephone number? United Airport. Maybe Maddie expected Mike to stop her at the airport. But he didn't. He couldn't. He had a contract, a picture to finish. So she went back to their New York apartment and composed a letter asking for her old job back. Nothing in that contract that said I had to stop living. Oh. Give up my wife or my own. Oh, it was the Chinese philosopher, Lu Tzu, who made this wise observation about success. Failure is the foundation of success. Success is the lurking place of failure. Makes you think, doesn't it? Well, good night. See you next week.